Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Mike Mangelardi and I am a front end developer and a vector artist. And I'm also the creator of codingartist.io, which is a platform for people to become front end developers with a heavy emphasis on design. So in today's video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over how to make a vector graphic. And now the reason I want to go over this is because there's a lot of interest on the web with doing SVGs. But unfortunately, most people might be intimidated by using something like Affinity Designer or Illustrator to create the vector graphic, or maybe they don't even know those tools are out there. So I wanted to do in this video is show you how to make a very simple vector graphic. And in this case, we're going to be making a simple koala image. And what I wanted to do after this video is create another video to, to show you how you can easily take that vector graphic that you create and take it to the web and do some cool stuff with that. Uh, but first things first, let's go ahead and get started with making our koala for this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to discuss three basic principles when creating vector graphics. And then we're going to break down the koala that we see on our right into its most basic shapes. So the three principles that you're going to want to focus on when creating vector graphics is one, making sure to be clean, be simple, and to be bold. Now, basically what I mean in short is that instead of really cluttering things with you know, too many details, too many shapes and things going on, try to make it simple. And a lot of times you'll make something that looks much better. And that kind of goes along with the other point of making it clean. Don't try to you know, do too much. Um, for instance, I'm making a koala, and if I told someone to make a koala, you'd be surprised how many people would think that they need to create, you know, the whole body, you know, maybe a koala on a tree and just really overthink things and go into way much more detail than it's really needed. So when you're making a vector graphic and you're trying to, you know, gather ideas, just think about how you can take simple shapes to create a vector graphic. Uh, in our case with the koala, we're going to be breaking down an existing image and showing you how it's composed of basic shapes. And my last point is to be bold. So for being bold is just really just making sure you're having a good selection of colors. And fortunately, there's a lot of good tools that you can use to come up with good colors. And I will have those linked into the description for this video. All right, so th with that aside, let's go ahead and break down this koala that we're going to be creating. So first we're going to have our head, which is going to be a larger light gray circle. Then for our ears, each ear will be two circles stacked on top of each other, one larger light gray circle and then one smaller dark gray circle. For our eyes, we're going to have, again, just two circles stacked on top of each other. In this case, our white outer eye is going to be a lot larger than our pupil, which is going to be just a smaller navy blue circle. For our nose, we're just going to simply have a rounded rectangle, which is going to be given a color of just light brown. And our hair is going to be another light gray uh, shape, uh, in this case, just two triangles next to each other. So that's really it. And again, I want to stress when you're making a vector graphic, try to think of something that you can create that is just simple shapes put together. And now another exercise that you can do before creating a vector graphic is I like to go to a site called Dribble with three B's. And what Dribble is, is it's a show and tell for designers. And a good exercise that you can do is look at other people's vector graphics and try to break it down into simple shapes. And then once you can think about what shapes are needed to create the vector graphic, it'll make things a lot easier when you're trying to pull your own ideas. Again, instead of trying to look at things as you know, too specific, too overwhelming, or you know just everything all at once, try to break things down step by step, or in our case, shape by shape. 
So let's go ahead and get started with the actual creation of our Koala image in Affinity Designer. So first things first is you can go ahead and you're going to click this rectangle, which is called our rectangle tool, as you can see if you hover over it. And starting from the top left corner, we'll click and then drag down. And then we just want to snap it in so it takes up our entire canvas. Then on the right hand side, you can go to swatches as I'm hovered over currently. You click on that and then there's going to be two circles. This circle on the bottom is going to correspond to our background color. So for instance, we're going to go ahead and change it to this specific hexadecimal code. And we can just go to our color chooser, which comes up when we double click one of these circles and paste it in right next to this hashtag and hit enter. And we get a color. Uh, I forgot to mention, but we are going to be going through the article that's provided in the description. And that is going to contain the hexadecimal codes they're going to use for our colors. So go ahead and get that open. Uh, and once you, do, you are done with that, we can go ahead and continue. So we gave this color to our background. And then what this circle does is it controls our borders or our strokes. And so if we increase the width, we can see what this looks like. All it is, it's adding a border, but it's referred to as a stroke. And we can change the color of that here. And if we click this, it'll get rid of any color. So right now we don't want any border. We just want a plain blue background like this. So next thing, the next thing we'll need to do is to create our head. And so to do that, we'll use the ellipse tool, which is going to be a circle. And we're just going to drag out a head until we get exactly the right size we want. Then we could click the move tool. And then we can select our head and we can click it and then drag it to the center and snap it in like so. Then we go to swatches and then we're going to have to give it its own color. And so pulling from our article, we're going to use this color right here. So I double click the circle next to the hashtag. I'll paste that in. And now, as you can see, we have our head right in the center like we wanted. Next, we're going to have to create our ear. Now, an easy way to create another circle once we've already created one is you can hit the command and J for Mac users. Uh, if you look at the article, there is links for the window shortcuts, which I'm not familiar with. But once you hit command and J, as you can see, Pay attention to the layers on the right. If we click this and do Command J, we've duplicated the layer. So now we have two circles of the same size. So our ear is going to be smaller than the circle. So what we'll do is while holding Shift, we'll drag this, which is going to maintain the height and width ratio that we had, but make it smaller. And so once we have that, let's go ahead and kind of place it where we want it on the head. And that looks about right. So we have our first steer. Now we need to do another one. So we'll also duplicate. And then we want to drag it across, but we don't want it to be you know, free just going wherever. Uh, we want to stay in a straight path. So we hold shift, click and drag to the right until we get it similar to the other side, like so. All right, so there we have the head and the ears of our koala, but we also want to have an inner ear. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate another one of these ears, hold shift and drag so it resizes. And then I'm going to try to get this so it's just a little bit smaller. And then we'll snap it right in the middle. As you can see, when I drag it here and it snaps, that means it's going right in the middle of the circle. So let's go ahead and get the hexadecimal, hexadecimal code for our dark gray circle. 
which I can copy from this article, go under swatches, click the bottom circle and paste it in like so. And now I could just duplicate this and I can shift, drag over and snap in the middle. But now that you see it's behind the ear and that's because it's below it on the layer, as you can see right here, here's our light gray circle and here's the dark gray circle we want on top. So you could either drag it like so, but what I like to do is, oops. What I like to do is I like to use the tools here. So this is go all the way to the back. This is go all the way to the forward. This is send back and this is send forward. So once we have our ears like so, uh, if you notice in our final image, we want these to be behind our head like so. So in order to do that, we'll select the ear, which is just clicking the move tool, dragging, and then as you can see, as it's highlighted with blue borders, we've selected one ear. We can hit Command and G, which is gonna group these two together. So let's say ear left and I forgot to name our head. So you could just double click on one of the layers and then you could give it its name. All right, so back to our ear left, which is a group. We'll just go and we'll send it backwards. So now it's behind our head. So now let's do the same thing for our other ear. And now an alternative to just highlighting it like so is we could either here, just click one and then hit command and then click another one and it'll select both. Or we can go on our actual image, click one of the shapes, hold shift and select the other shape and it will select them together as well. Uh, once we have both selected, we'll hit command G, which will group it again. And let's name it ear right and then we'll send this backwards one and we have our head and our ears. So I'm gonna just fiddle around until I get the exact shape I want. And I'll delete the left ear and I'll just duplicate the right ear once I get it how I want it. And there, that looks right. This is a duplicate, so let's rename it to ear right. All right, so there we have the head and the ears for our koala. Now let's go on and create our eyes. So we go back to the ellipse tool, which is the circle, and we'll drag out an eye until we get just about the size that we want. And I want this just a little bit more over than the center. So I'll just drag this out a little bit more. Now to zoom in, you can hit Command and Plus, and then I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger like that. And then we hit, can hit command and minus to zoom back out. So now let me go ahead and I'm going to duplicate the shape, hold shift and drag it over. And I want them to be overlapping like so. Now I'm going to select one and change it to white. Now select the other one and change it to white. Uh, now this looks a little off centered. So what I can do is select both of these and then I could drag it. And then there we see with the green line that it is horizontally centered. So there we have our eyes. And so let me go ahead and also hit command J to duplicate it, hold shift and drag it down. And then that is going to be our pupil, which is going to be right in the center. Now let me go to the article and grab the hexadecimal code, which is going to be this right here. So we go back to swatches, select the circle, paste our hexadecimal code in, and then we have a pupil and I'm going to Duplicate again by holding Command and J, click and hold, and hold Shift, 
drag it over until it's in the center of our left eye. And then I'm going to select both of these, hit Command G, which will group them. Then I'll name it I left. Then I select both of these, hit Command G, group that, and name it I right. All right, so we have that. The next thing we'll need is our nose, which we can just go ahead and click the rectangle tool. And then we'll drag out a nose like so. And then we can click it. And then we want it vertically centered, or pardon me, horizontally centered, um, as we can see with the green line. We want just a little bit below the eyes like so. So let's go ahead and give it the hexadecimal code that we need, which is going to be this right here. We go under swatches, click the circle, paste it in again. And there we have our nose. Uh, however, we want the corners to be rounded. So we can go to our corner tool, which we see right here and we select our image. And here we see there's four corners and we want to round all of these. So we select all of them and then we could just click one and drag and it'll start to round our corners. So that looks about right. And there we see we have our nose just like we wanted. So there we have our nose and our koala is just about done. So the last thing we'll need to do is let's go to our triangle tool and we just want a little triangle to be the hair for our left. And then I could also go to recent and just select recently used colors. I'll select the light gray color. Then I could duplicate this. And I just want the same thing. I just want it to be a little bit lower. Let me zoom in so it's a little bit easier. And just like that. And we have our hair. Now, I forgot to name our nose, and then I'm just going to name hair right. I'm going to name hair left. All right, so as you can see, we've just created our very first vector graphic, and it was pretty easy. As you can see, it's just a bunch of different shapes that we're going to put together to create our final image. So if you want to get some extra practice, make sure to check out the description as I have a link to an email challenge called SVG Daily Images. So every day you'll get a prompt to create a vector graphic, something that's going to be you know, like this koala. Uh, something not too overwhelming, but will just be a good way of getting practice. And so every day you can create one and just get more and more practice so you can get more familiar with making vector graphics. The other thing that I wanted to highlight is that again, go to dribble, that's dribble with three Bs, and you can just look at other people's vector graphics and try to break things down by shapes. And remember, when you're creating vector graphics, there's three rules, be simple, be clean, and be bold. So guys, I hope that was helpful for creating your very first vector graphic. Once you have it all completed, you can just go to File, Save, and you can save your project locally, and that is how you're going to open it. So Save is going to save the actual project so you can go in and you know make changes. If you just want to export the final image, you would go to File, Export, and then you have options for how you can export the image.